He's angry about mortgages. It's Angry Mortgage. He's swearing. He's cursing loud. He's old. He's opinionated. And he's been doing this so damn long. This program is about mortgages, and this is mortgage advice, but the advice may not apply to your situation. Contact licensed mortgage professionals for specific recommendations before you make decisions about mortgages. You may not agree with Ron, but if you don't, uh, he thinks you're wrong. Oh, and did we say there is a lot of swearing? And we're back. We're back. Angry Mortgage Angry is Mortgage back. Angry Mortgage on air jan mm -hmm. as always except mm -hmm. we're on vacation yes uh and uh angry ron and ron the mortgage guy mad as fuck about everything um <laughs> and uh we, we're gonna we're gonna keep that going all through the, the the theme of anger is gonna run through the show anger and fuckery is gonna run through the show so it's perfect with the title <laughs> perfect we try to stay on the theme <laughs> so we had, and if we have a couple of uh, reports come out in Canada. We had an inflation report last week. Not be, uh, actually, it'd be almost 10 days ago now. Be ten, yeah, 10 days ago, we had an inflation report. Inflation ticks up a bit, mm -hmm. just a touch, a little unexpected. Everybody thought it would stay down, down, down. Instead of 2.6, we got 2.9. Wow. Not the end of the world. Uh, but that's meaningful for bond yields and mortgage rates. I hate we talk about all, this all the time, but we have no choice because it's where mortgage rates come from. Um, so bond yields tick up because the, the glide path is less inflation all the time mm -hmm. equals lower bond yields equals lower mortgage rates. Okay. So lower fixed mortgage rates. Right. But the inflation report, it does a couple of things. Uh, it, it makes people think about what will the Bank of Canada do next? Right. Because the bank... I was actually, I, I was not 100% a believer that we were going to have a June cut from the Bank of Canada, and yet we, we did, okay? I knew there would be cuts this year. I offered a $10,000 bounty on cuts this year. <laughs> I, I don't have to worry about it. Nobody, everybody who pretended to take me up in it never sent me their information so we could seal the bet. So, but still, <laughs> uh, look, this inflation stuff is going to bounce around. And these mortgage rates are going to bounce around, like for, fluctuate. For it's not like, a steady line. Not a straight line. Like all of my commentary about this for the last six months has been not linear, but rates will continue to come down. Let me give my best advice to anybody um, who is looking at a renewal or thinking about buying a house. Mm -hmm. If it's a three, four, or five year fixed rate. And it's not a little under five. Like that might even be four nine nine. Okay, mm. you get, if that's your offer, five oh five four. Well, maybe five oh four is not the end of the world, but five one nine, five one four. There's a better deal out there. There's Assuming they qualify. So yeah, everybody's got to qualify. Yeah. Everybody's got to have the right income, right down right. payment, good credit rating, the whole nine yards. But yeah, if you do qualify, like if a bank is telling you, yes, I can get you five point one nine. Just say, sort of say to them, well, you know what? Fuck yourself. Okay, there's a better rate out there. Shop around. I'm going to go find it. Okay, That's what so, brokerages are for. Shop around. So we're not going to see, like, there's not going to be any, you know, we're going to see a few less 479 rates, 489 rates, four whatever nine rates. High ratio still very, very good deals. We have, there are great deals for five-year uh, high ratio right now, but um, no, for the majority of mortgages, because high ratio is a minority, small. Um for, for the, those CMHC mortgages, they, you know, it's hard to even find a way to do one in Ontario these days. Unless it's yeah. a condo. <laughs> and even then, not easy, okay? Yeah. Uh, stress test, the whole nine yards, not easy. But the point is, uh, if you're not hearing something that's got a, starts with a four as a rate on a fixed, three, four, five-year fixed, it's not starting with a four, Try to find a way to go out and get a four in front. It's out yeah. there. Get it's out. Gotta it's find all it. likelihood. It is absolutely out there. Mm -hmm. But there, there may not be a cut in July. There may not be a Bank of Canada cut in July. Um, I was never one who thought there'd just be. Uh, I saw some stuff in social media. People were saying, "Hey, you know what? 
It's just going to be every meeting. There's going to be a cut. Every meeting date for the bank account is going to be a cut. Don't you think there'd be too much chaos if it was just cut after cut after cut? Like, no, well, I think there'd be some happy people. <laughs> well, yeah, for sure. But you need the economy to kind of like adjust, right? Well, you know, I, I think one of the things that we are seeing. It's a good point you make. One of the things that we are seeing is just this kind of steady deterioration in the economy. Mm -hmm. You know, when we look at, uh, we had a GDP report mm -hmm. last week as well. Not negative, but not good. Yeah. And here's what I have to keep circling back to endlessly. We're still bringing new Canadians into Canada. Yeah. There's still some international students showing up. There's still some international temporary workers showing up. There's still immigration to Canada. Immigration does not stop. The government's not. made some changes. Yes. Yeah. Eventually, it'll take a greater effect. Yes. Yeah. Okay. But if you bring more people in, your economy grows because they got to eat. They got to yeah. get shelter. They got to get transportation. Um, and again, we have like, when you start to compare things like other countries where there's virtually no immigration, mm -hmm. um, yeah, our, our economy, for the, for the amount of immigration we have, our economy ain't doing so hot. Yeah. Tiny, tiny GDP increases. Basically, infinite per capita negatives now. Like when you when you actually say, well, how? what about for the individual? Like if you increase the population, of course, the whole country's GDP goes up. Right. But what about the individual? Well, the individual just keeps getting wrecked. Month after month, quarter after quarter, individuals doing worse. So... Mm -hmm. We saw other reports that talked about uh, a real slowdown in construction, mainly in Ontario, but possibly severe. Okay. Wow. Uh, we saw reports about uh, transportation down. You know, we did have, um, I think, the second or third biggest uh, truck transport company in uh, Ontario went to receivership a few months ago. Uh, we've, we've just retail sales down for big ticket items. We've just seen a lot of clear indications that. The economy slows down, mm -hmm. right? And that's why the Bank of Canada will continue to cut, but they don't have to cut every meeting. Mm -hmm. Like, there's no, there's no reason for them to cut every meeting. I mean, they need to take it a slow route, right? Like this tiny peak into recession is the goal, right? To be able to bring the economy down and stabilize things. So it has to, it can't just be all instant. It has to be at a steady pace. Well, and to your point, there ain't going to be no sudden half a percent cut. Yeah. <laughs> that ain't happening. Okay. Oh. I mean, you know, in, in fairness to uh, the Bank of Canada governor, who we have more or less ridicule constantly. Um, <laughs> and I keep getting feedback. There's people in those offices that are. They want the Muppet. <laughs> the people in those offices that keep track of us. In, like, oh, keep track of angry mortgage keep track of wrong mortgage guy which wait, I, wait, wait which offices like a bunch of them like apparently oh, i thought you meant like government offices i was like oh. no no i do mean government offices <laughs> let, let, let me explain okay so, is watching so, right so now <laughs> I, I i i no the the actual bosses don't have a fucking clue who i mm -hmm. am okay or any of us as social media mm -hmm. but there are people if you look at every department whether it's the bank of canada yeah whether it's the bank regulator, OSFI, which is the Office of Superintendent of Financial Institutions, mm -hmm. or uh, the Department of Finance at Ottawa. And this makes sense. There are people assigned mm -hmm. to watch social media. Right. And any YouTube videos that have keywords like CRA, TIFF, yeah, whatever. Mean, or a yeah. Muppet, you know, like a <laughs> Muppet may definitely get some, some play. Okay. Um, so... But not not the bosses. The bosses, mm -hmm. they got other shit to do. They don't give two fucks about some. They have a dedicated team for that. They have, a, they have some people who keep yeah. track of it. Okay. They, yeah, they yeah. don't they don't give a tiny shit what mm -hmm. they, you know what Hello, if you're watching. <laughs> <laughs> but the funny part is that um they do they they're like there's a list and we're on the list. We're on okay, the list. We're on the list. Yeah, I'm on the list. Um so I'm not, I'm not the there's a long list. There's a bunch of people they check out. But yeah. Um, because let's face it, every year, old media, television, newspaper, all that stuff. I mean, I think radio is almost extinct, even though I, <laughs> even though I paid to advertise on it. Um, like, but old media has less and less eyeballs mm -hmm. paying attention to it. Yeah. And social media or a version of internet-based media, mm -hmm. app-based, like Apple News or 
you know, Google's always popping up information at you, right? Yeah. Whenever you go there and all kinds of different methods, advertising on all the different social medias, mm -hmm. social media apps that exist. Um, and then news, there's news on all those apps. I mean, you, you know, Elon Musk, I know a lot of people hate Elon, but he actually <laughs> uh, floated an idea on X, he used to call it Twitter. Mm -hmm. um, some people call it, put the X and Twitter together and they call it X shitter. Okay, so, so anyway, <laughs> so, so anyhow, uh, Elon Musk floated an idea. I said, hey, you know, why, you know, would, should we be Google? Mm -hmm. Should X oh. be Google? Okay. Oh. Uh, should we have that as part of our service on an app? Okay. True. Because his point was that news shows up faster oh, on X than anywhere else. One thousand okay. percent. If there's like there was a accident on the QE mm -hmm. um, a couple weeks ago and I didn't search you know, city news or whatever. Right. I went on Twitter. Ah. I looked for it on Twitter and I got it instantly and i was able to see videos and photos of it in immediately and then maybe 20 minutes later it's on the news hey, you know, so that, that's uh, just how my generation works man we just you know the thing about <laughs> it is that uh it's just faster it's so much faster because it's a jillion people exactly right? so it's you the know, new age of communication yeah a reporter doesn't have to figure out what the story should be show it to an editor show it to a producer get clearance there's none of that there's just a bunch of dipshits like me posting shit right i mean like uh, slowing a, down traffic on the other side to take your video to post on so twitter it's fast but it's fast right <laughs> just like you said your point it is, is absolutely yeah, perfect it's, it is. it's the fastest <clears throat> method mm -hmm. if you're thinking oh did that happen did something happen i'll, I'll like, check social honestly, media honestly i always used to look at go to google i've stopped entirely that's crazy i just look it up i just look stuff up and <laughs> now, not for complicated stuff. Like I want right. to want to do a lot of big background checks on people or background checks in a company. I will use Google. Right. Yeah. But if I just want, oh, I heard this. Let me confirm it. Mm -hmm. That's X. Wow. Every time, sure. Every time. Times uh, have changed. But uh, you know, one thing about uh, the Angry Mortgage Show, uh, mm -hmm. we seem to be spending uh, effectively an infinite amount of our time talking about mortgage fraud. Okay. Oh, mortgage so, fraud. <laughs> so I got to let me give you the the stories of the week. Mm -hmm. uh, one piece of good news from a source involved in it uh, came the note that when it comes to mortgage document fraud and linkage to CRA, which we talk about endlessly, mm -hmm. there is a bit of progress being made. Okay. So in government, everything moves so slowly uh, unless, you know, it's uh, sending out checks or uh, charging people <laughs> or charging people or auditing you for something oh, or yeah. CRA auditing you that could happen fucking quick all of okay? a sudden boom in a day it's <laughs> in a day done. You're, it's there okay <laughs> but other than that things move slowly uh, however there was the from uh, a great reliable source i was told that there have they've had in in ottawa mm -hmm. between the department of finance and CRA and the, the stakeholders involved not that the bank, not the banks yet. That's getting there. Yeah, okay. but there was a meeting mm -hmm. to set a date for a meeting <laughs> to have a meeting <laughs> to actually do something to wow. actually uh, and and you know the budgets are being reestablished. The, uh, the 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 bullshit about well is this so we're probably going to have to talk to the privacy commissioner. Mm -hmm. Okay, well uh, here's one uh, note for the privacy commissioner. Please go fuck yourself. Okay, <laughs> like if someone is wants a mortgage, and they've given you the income documents, and they've signed a waiver that says you may check on my income to your heart's content, mm -hmm. because I understand that is vital to underwriting a mortgage. Mm -hmm. Like we don't want like you can't know anything about their income; it's private. No, no, that's bullshit. Okay, yeah. so. So, Mr. Privacy Commissioner, Mrs. Privacy, whoever the fuck is the Privacy Commissioner? I don't know. <laughs> this is not privacy, okay? They've given the documents of their own accord. They've signed a waiver that we can investigate the documents. Yep. And all we're asking of CRA is, and not, not little shitty-ass mortgage brokers like me, like only big banks, credit unions, like big lenders, okay? Mm -hmm. the, the lenders at the top of the food chain. Yeah. They can ask 
is this an only one line too? Line fifteen thousand, the box which is net taxable income. Is this true or false? Is this document in front of us true yes or false? Yes or no. You don't even need to tell us how much of a difference. Just yes or no. Yes. Don't even. Do that. Oh, oh, that's <laughs> no wrong. No details. Right. No details. <laughs> no. So okay, privacy commissioner, just please get it through your fucking head. This isn't privacy. Okay. Mm. Uh, but that, that's a good that's a good thing. It's a good thing. A that meeting is better than nothing. Yeah, a meeting is better than we put the we put the document out. We told everybody we're going to do it. Now we're going to yeah. forget about it. So it is a little better news. So that's mm. positive. Uh, there's some other negatives. Okay, uh, there's never all, all never nothing to do with fraud is always all good. Yeah. Uh, so I have been given a lead just last week. I got a couple couple calls from people. Because people call me because mm -hmm. I'm known as. They call you to spill the tea. <laughs> yes. We call it tea. We call it tea. Call it yeah. tea. Okay. That's uh, gossip. It, it's, it's, it's like, hey, uh, did you hear about this? I said, no, I haven't heard about that. Well, let me explain it to you. And then after they explain it to me, mm -hmm. I think, holy fuck. That is just fucking awful. And I also think out of 29 years, I haven't heard about this one before. Oh my God. You, I think you've said that to me at least like two or three times this year. This year. Yeah. There was the thing that happened. This, this is a crazy Well, this year. is actually the first, this is the first year anybody shot and killed a mortgage guy about bad mortgages. That's the first. This has not happened before. Okay. I think you said it about the promissory notes too. The promissory note thing. We that thing I, crazy. It, I, I just about fell off. A, like, I knew that this dirty bastard, Greg Martell, was doing the promissory notes. Mm -hmm. But Greg, Greg was always a bit of a flake, to mm -hmm. be honest with you. And although I was surprised, mm -hmm. like I was surprised by the size of it. But then the Claire Drage promissory note thing. Brought it to a whole new level. I thought, fuck a duck. She's like a very known person in the yeah. business. Like she's a like a 15 year person. Mm -hmm. Promissory notes? Like it's li literally a license to steal more or less. People yeah. giving you money on a promissory yeah. note. So that did shock. This is also new. Wow. This, this, I can't talk about it. I know everybody's... Well, look at that fat bastard. He's teasing us with bullshit. He's <laughs> saying there's a big story coming, and then we, but we, he can't talk about it. So, look. The cliffhanger. <laughs> well, I got to say this openly. I get lawyers' letters. Okay. <laughs> I get letters from lawyers. Okay. I get letters from, you said about this, and that's not right. Oh, for fuck's sake. I'm just telling the truth. Or, hey, you, I'm, I, I think you shouldn't have said this. Well, wait a second. I never mentioned your names or the name of your company mm -hmm. or just suggested that this thing might have happened in the past. Yeah. Okay. That's the, why are you sending me a letter, you crazy motherfuckers? Okay. It's, it's like, the verbiage. Like you say one thing past or present and it's like, that's it. But in, <laughs> in every case, I would tell you honestly, Jan, it's just designed to suppress. Mm hmm. They yes. just want you to take it down and pretend it didn't happen. They, they want you to suppress mm -hmm. history. Okay, so you know we don't we don't want you to talk about that. So we're going to litigate you because mm -hmm. litigation is never cheap, right? Yeah, it's never cheap, and even when the litigation is absolutely utterly bullshit. Mm -hmm. So my lawyer looked at one the other day and said, "What the fuck? This is like nonsense." Okay, yeah. uh, it's just designed to try to get you to retract or to or scare to, tactics uh, scare or just, tactics yeah. or bullshit okay and my lawyer's a tough lawyer my lawyer's not afraid to tell me you did what you crazy fucker okay what did you do why did you do that my lawyer is not afraid to say that to I'm me I'm not surprised that's the type of lawyer you would have <laughs> <laughs> so this was this was no he says I don't get this I don't get this at all mm. anyway so you when you're sort of looking into a story that's like when you hear the details mm -hmm. you just say to yourself Whoa, fuck. What a new crooked twist this is on private lending. I mean, like, mm -hmm. this is fuckery writ large. All right, like, mm -hmm. bad. But, folks, again, not just a pure tease, you know, not like that, you know, not like that guy outside the strip joint in New Orleans who's handing you out a program of stuff to tease you, okay? <laughs> uh, did I say too much there? I think I went off script there a little bit, right? Okay, like, a bunch of people saying... 
what did he say? <laughs> <laughs> anyway. To be fair, the Las Vegas Strip is exactly the same. So that's... Yeah, okay, fair enough. So, <laughs> so I, I'm not teasing because I am going to work on this story. You just need the facts so we don't get lawyer uh, letters. We, we, yeah, we need, we need like chapter and verse. Yeah. Okay? Um, but it's a story that's, like I said, it's surprising. Although, I'll say one thing, more thing about it. When I first saw this organization appear a few years ago, I said to myself, what the, f these guys have come out of nowhere mm -hmm. to big, like spending big. Mm. And, you know, you always got to stop and say, where did that money come from? Because you can't spend big. I'm, we're going to go on to another subject <laughs> of spending big in a minute, but um, yeah. where did this where would this money come from to do all this stuff they're doing and all this promotion they're doing? It's not free. Mm -hmm. I don't know why they came out of nowhere. They just appeared. So we're gonna be that's gonna be a story for the future. But then again, if if there may be <laughs> fuckery involved, that's sort of the answer as to where the seed money came from when mm. it started. If you were planning to do evil. You can find some money for that. Yeah. Anyway, there's it, a will. There's a so way. I, I've, I've I've done enough teasing. I'm, I'm I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll shut down my uh, I'll shut down my New Orleans connection now to the ballet. <laughs> okay. Uh, no more tease. But yeah, it's going to be something we're going to work on in the coming weeks and months. And it uh, if it goes where I think it goes, going to go. It's it's just oh shit! It caught me unawares today. I just. When I heard about it last week, it so you'll have to do your homework and you'll oh. have to put out your graph. Could take a long. Oh yeah, this is a big <laughs> F A F O graph. Yes, I mean like it's, but it's, you know, again, and we talked about it last week. We, we've been talking about nothing but fraud lately. Yeah, um, it is just I think a function of the market turning. Mm. You know, the market turning and people getting desperate and some other stuff. But. I was going to say, do you think desperation brings people to the point where they just basically start doing evil? Uh, you know, it's always, I, I watched a big, a big segment on the news about lawyers going wrong. Cause we've got this lawyer couple in Toronto who may or may not have absconded with 17 million dollars of their clients money mm -hmm. um and and so there's a, a a big there's a big segment about like what happens did they start because it was a big money laundering segment right can there was a ctv ran a money laundering segment about lawyers mm -hmm. and um the question was did it did they start off dirty did they mm -hmm. plan to do evil yeah or did they just get involved at the edges and then eventually somebody just said, just do this once. And then after another year, it was doing it every day. Yeah. You know, is that is that how crime grows amongst people who start off normal? Yeah. Okay. But yeah. I think with this, this story we're thinking about here that I just mentioned, I think this probably, this could be got haywire, but I don't think so. I think this was evil from the hop. Okay. Mm. So... And we're gonna we're gonna follow it up, and I might tease it a little more later. I promise I stop teasing, but um, <laughs> but we're gonna we're gonna follow it up and see what follow happens. up with facts. Now, one more little little quite this was quite interesting to me. Mm -hmm. uh, talking to some uh, lenders in the alternative space, and uh, they are they are lenders who chiefly a, a big chunk of their business is for people who have um, credit they can't go to a bank. So mm -hmm. These are companies that are federally regis registered. Yeah. They are institutional lenders, but they specialize in people whose, whose FICO scores, whose credit scores are not going to work out for them with a big bank. They're not going to work out with a big bank and they're not, uh, they, and many of them are self-employed. So right. they may not show that much income in terms of that famous line 15,000 yeah. on a notice of assessment that we talked about earlier. So these are prime candidates for mortgages from these uh, alternative lending companies mm -hmm. and um talked to a couple of them and they are all saying the same thing in the last three or four months on the on the small business side mm -hmm. of their business like where they're working with those people who are not don't have paychecks don't have regular salaries but they're self-employed people mm -hmm. or they own their own business 
they're telling me that the fraud is up like nice. fraudulent documents in this case it's not income documents it's not like tax documents it's not t4s mm -hmm. it's not paste statements it's not fake job letters it's mm -hmm. bank statements because that's how you analyze a business you yeah. say well my business brings in 300 grand and then I net about this much. Mm -hmm. Well, then we want to see the bank statements, 12 months bank statements and say, yeah, your business really did bring in 300 grand, mm -hmm. okay? Fake, fake business bank statements. Wow. This is a big growth industry, okay? Wow. It, like, uh, I'm, I'm at, well, like, I'm, I've heard a little bit about that a couple months ago, more about it last month, more about it last week. I just said, like, well, how many is it? Yeah. And somebody said, well, it might be one out of six. Holy shit. We are catching. We're catching one out of six small business applications. With... Now, I, I didn't think it was that bad. Mm -hmm. I really didn't. I didn't think it was that bad. What do you think are driving small business owners to do, like, bank like bank statement fraud? Well, great, quick question. I mean, like, it's a lot of work why wouldn't they just do it on like not to question their crime but like why wouldn't they just adjust their income statements well um you know they, they hate to pay the tax because you increase your own personal income right you pay more tax and right, a right. lot of small business people don't want to pay tax right don't blame them it's hard work it's, they take the risk you know everybody who does functions on their own takes a risk mm -hmm. uh but the weirdest part too is that these people these these alternative lending institutions mm -hmm. will have much higher rates than regular banks for mortgages so we just finished talking about a mortgage that starts with a four right uh for people who qualify fully qualified yeah these are mortgages that start with a six and sometimes a seven okay so they are and they have more right. fees regular you know big big six banks don't charge fees on mortgages these institutions do so it's a six or a seven percent rate and a fee, and a one percent fee. So they're basically okay? doing fraud to get a higher rate. It seems strange, right? But what it is is there's <laughs> no hope with their bank because their bank knows their business. And other banks, you know, yeah, you don't, yeah, yeah, and and they just decide, I I, I don't want to do this really fake income doc thing. Mm -hmm. I'd rather, uh, you know, but. If I just boost my business's income, I think yeah. I could do this because they're basically they're people who've got turned down already right. from the big banks, and because they just can't pull, they just, they just don't show enough income, and and they may have some credit impairment too. We don't know always that side of the could story. Could it be that even though it seems like they're doing fraud for a higher rate, they're still doing it to avoid going into private? Yes, I think they're avoiding, they're trying to avoid the very expensive private mortgage costs. They probably don't like, qualify for alternative anyways. That's probably Well, if they're, they're doing, doing fraud, they really don't qualify. Yeah. You're right. so, yeah. so at the end of the day, they're trying to avoid the 9 and 10% interest. Mm -hmm. But what it boils down to is if you're, if you want to, if you feel you are going to, willing to pay a higher rate mm -hmm. and you're willing to produce fake documents to do it, you need the fucking money. Mm -hmm. okay so there's something going wrong in that business maybe yeah right like yeah. something's not going right okay um or they're squeezed by renewals or they're squeezed by the whole affordability problem we have in canada and they're, yeah. they're getting desperate so yeah. yeah that kind of flows into our discussion earlier about businesses are are finding sales are harder to come by okay? yeah and sales are down and therefore they may need money to get by all right so oh uh, that's so that it just seems to be no end mm -hmm. of fraud news, uh, in, uh, in mortgage world. Uh, <laughs> about, uh, We're going to have to put fraud in the fine print of our title now. I know, well, <laughs> yeah, well, uh, you know what, 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 the funny part is whenever any, any time a bank or a lender or the mortgage insurers like CMHC or Sajin or CG, when they put on a seminar about how to catch fraud, which mm -hmm. is valuable, right? Yeah. They put on training about how to catch fraud. It's not in the fine print, but it should be. It should say, "This is not a training course." Yeah, okay? we're not training you how to do fraud. We're not. Yeah. Like, we're not telling you about all these red flags so that you can learn how to do it. Yeah, okay? yeah. It's not, we're not trying to. Yeah, anyway, too much fraud. Um, now, something weird in cottage country, uh, real estate. So, uh, vacation homes. There was a bump in sales of vacation homes because. 
Some people bought a cottage 30 years ago, right? Mm -hmm. And when this new capital gains inclusion rate happened, it ends yeah. up with people who have to pay more. You bought that cottage 30 years ago. I mean, shit, you might have built it yourself. Yeah, okay? at that or point. You, or you, you, you bought the been, land and then just built. Or, or, you, or you bought a shack and you've been just improving on it gradually, gradually, gradually. Yeah. And let's face it, depending on where the cottage is, you know, there's... They call them different things in different places. Sometimes they call them a cabin. Sometimes other provinces, chalets. What all that stuff? But I mean, yeah. Uh, well, yeah. There, there's that whole separate ski thing I could get into, but I <laughs> don't have time. Um, so, secondary property. So you own your own home, right? Mm -hmm. And you also own this other property that mm -hmm. might be. It's typically a cottage on a lake in mm -hmm. Ontario. Ontario and Quebec are full of lakes. Same thing. It's always a. It's always a cottage on water it's always a building on water a secondary home on water okay so all the boomers got it exactly <laughs> yeah, so this little bump and so for the people who were thinking who heard about this mm -hmm. possible paying more tax on the sale of these things they said well we got to hurry up and sell right fucking now okay yeah. to avoid the tax because it was the june i think 26th okay oh so there <laughs> so there was a bump yeah there was a bump in sales uh but it was uh, sales went up in eight, eight uh, by the way, it's a kind of depressed market right now mm -hmm. because let's face it, in a bad economy and high interest rates, uh, it's a luxury. I right? mean, if even people who are financially well can barely afford their first home, eh, let eh. alone a second right not now. Let alone a second. Mm -hmm. So, But there are still a lot of rich people running around Ontario oh, sure. and BC and Alberta yeah. and Quebec. There's people with money. There seems to be an, always people with some money. Okay. Mm -hmm. They're out there. Okay. Mm -hmm. So... I'm not saying I'm, I'm a capitalist, so I'm not criticizing it too much. But I mean, it is interesting that you're right. Mm -hmm. um, they're expensive, but yeah, they are expensive. Like yeah. I, in, in Ontario, there's not too many colleges don't start with a million. Okay, yeah. and there's lots, and of course, there's always like it's location, location, location in all forms of real estate, right? Yeah. Can you imagine? There's like better lakes. Can you imagine? The, like, no, like, that's actually true. Yeah, right? Yes, because if you go to a cottage, like my friends and I do usually cottage every year. If you go to a cottage and the lake smells murky, Ooh, shit. we're not going back. No, no. Versus if it's like crystal clear water, I'm there. But there's actually like <laughs> famous lakes. Yeah. Like there's famous lakes Because I think like even Justin Bieber has like a, yeah, 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 a cottage yes. in Muskoka. Yes, he does. And, and it's yeah. they, like there's like there's. And even like the the <clears throat> lake snobs will say to you, well, are, 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 are you, are you are, are, is your cottage on Lake Joe or is your cottage on Rosso? Which where is your cottage? <laughs> so if you're like on a shit lake, you don't even yeah. want to say, no, I, I don't know where the cottage is. You know, like, yeah, you know, yeah. I, like I got like, so I'm not fucking with you. Okay? Yeah, no, like, no, I believe like, it. There, there's there's like, and I've been to some of them. Like I'm fortunate. I, I I'm not. You know, we sometimes there's events where you mm. go up to cottage country, mm -hmm. and sometimes part of the event is they. You get to go to a famous person's cottage, okay? Mm -hmm. And they put on a, they have, you know, whoever's taking you there, they sort of renting it out for the day. And, yeah. Oh, like there is cottage fetishism, okay? Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, 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 oh, that, look. And then there's, as you're, as you're taking the boat to get to the cottage, yeah. somebody, oh, yeah, over there's that hockey player, and over there's this movie star, and over there's Justin Bieber, and yeah. all that. Okay, <laughs> and some of these places are fucking wild they're like okay. literally just mansions Woo, on, on the like lake the boathouse the, the the house over the boats is a fucking mansion for fuck's <laughs> sakes and the other house oh doug ford built like a a palace up north you know and he he, he built the, the the premier uh built like this <laughs> unbelievable fucking huge massive compound in the last couple of years on a wow, lake Oh, good I for mean, him but we have a dollar beer we but well well no it's like a they're, they're they're going on strike maybe i don't know anyhow yeah i, I can't I, yeah it, what what's what uh, what are things that happened in the summer uh the traffic's fucked up and there's we're gonna have a strike at the liquor store when you're thirsty okay well that's always a, or, or we're gonna have a strike at the airline so your all oh, your yeah. travel plans are fucked for the summer okay? and let's not forget that ttc almost went on strike like two weeks ago so just everything's just hang your head fucking and shit show okay, absolutely so what well, what interesting <clears throat> part of it so there was this bump in sales in cottage country yeah and it was substantial. I think in, in May, I think it was an 18% bump year on year. And I think it's going to be a bigger bump in June. Mm -hmm. okay? And in what is basically a depressed market. Yeah. You know? um, but the most interesting thing to me is, a couple of lawyers phoned me about, you know, we're talk chatting about this cottage action. Mm -hmm. And one of the lawyers said, well, you know, what's interesting is that even these rich people buying these cottages, like sometimes it's cash because, mm -hmm. you know, it's a secondary property. People have money. It's like a $3 million house. So, you know. Mm -hmm. Pocket change. But he says, what's this? 
like one in four of them, mm-hmm. when they need a mortgage, one in four of them are private lending. Like they're not a bank or anything like a bank. Oh. They're like private lending. So well, what sense is that? So give me an example. He says, yeah. He says, okay, $2.8 million cottage. Mm-hmm. The last 600 that came in was from a private lender. So there's big money, like mm-hmm. $2.2 million, but they just couldn't quite do it. So not a bank, a private lender. So I said, well, why the hell would people who are obviously making big money if they got $2 million to put down, it's not a primary residence, it's a, it's a secondary home. Is the private their friend? No. Mm. No, like a, a recognized mm-hmm. lender of private money. So why? Yeah, that's what I said. And he said, well, he said, I don't know, but you know, even rich people have limits. So I talked to another lawyer about it because it piqued my curiosity. Mm-hmm. I talked to another lawyer. He says, oh, yeah. He says, yeah, we've. You've seen some, definitely seen some private lending on these big purchases of cottages. I thought, what the fuck's going on here? Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Maybe so, they something they know something we don't know. <laughs> or they just want something bad and they're 600 short and then somebody will give them the money, you know, that yeah. kind of stuff. But I, I don't have those answers. But uh, I did, the thing was interesting. Like uh, private lending just keeps on coming. Um, mm-hmm. There is some mortgage lend, there's actually like insider mortgage news that. Regular people don't give a shit about, but mortgage <laughs> brokers and other people in the industry care about. Um, a lender, uh, a, a, I've known those guys for years. I've got friends there. A lender called CMLS mm-hmm. was purchased by a organization with the financings from the, the Demeray family out of Quebec. But the company who in theory bought them is a company called Nesto. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nesto I've always made fun of forever. <laughs> you know, I've just... Like I, sometimes I lay off them for a few months and then I bring it up again. But um, <laughs> Nesto is one of these companies that uh, was put together by, you know, by again, Demery money out of Quebec and uh, fronted by these tech nerds. OK, who uh, say, well, we're going to take over direct. We're going to turn mortgages into direct consumer lending. So there's no mortgage brokers involved, no mm-hmm. sales reps involved. It's just going to be this great and wonderful application we have, digital mm-hmm. application. It's going to be so good. People are going to just flock to it, and we're going mm-hmm. to just dominate the business. And that's like a total fucking failure for all of them. Like, it doesn't matter if it's Nesto. They failed big time. Uh, everybody else has tried it. These Pine guys and who the hell else? Uh, and and uh, who else was I thinking of? There's some other guys who've tried it. Oh, um, the Rocket people do it, Rocket mm-hmm. Mortgage. And now they've sort of become like more like normal brokers, but... Uh, they didn't take over the world, okay? Mm-hmm. They're not bad guys, so I'm not, I don't want to beat up too much on the Rocket guys. Um, but I'm happy to beat up on the Nesto guys because they just <laughs> pissed money down both legs and Yikes. they basically sort of gave up. Like mm-hmm. they, they, you know, they pretend everything's fine, but mm-hmm. they just r- ran up the white flag. Like we've lost $200 million on trying to do this uh, direct consumer thing. We failed miserably. Mm-hmm. And now, uh, now, but now we're going to do, uh, we're going to pivot. We're pivoting, which mm-hmm. is in the Californian language means... We need a new lie to tell. Okay. Yeah. So they bought up my friends at CMLS. Lots of good people I know at CMLS. Mm-hmm. Good management group, solid people. CMLS, there's a bunch of reasons I won't get into as to why it was time for CMLS to be sold. But, uh, and naturally, because the Nesto and the Demarais overpaid by like $100 million, like they paid $100 million too much for it. Oh, yeah. okay. So that's just typical. <laughs> anyway, yeah. uh, there's, uh, I, I, Again, I got I got lawyers telling me don't tell the whole story, Ron. What you really <laughs> think is the reason behind it, but uh, yeah, let's like, let's just leave it there that they overpaid by hundred million, and um, so they're taking over CMLS. CMLS, mm-hmm. the, the the sort of the big thing at CMLS is commercial mortgages, right? Right. Mortgages on big buildings, commercial yeah. buildings and stuff, multifamily yeah. commercial buildings, uh, malls, warehouses. That's the backbone of it, and uh, they did a good job at that. Then they got into residential lending, was that sort of one follows the other and um, they do a good job at that. They have some mm-hmm. of the best, uh, best, best, best in class application systems for if you want to process yeah. mortgaging in the back end, like get an approval, go to CMHC, uh, go to, go to um, uh, CG, go to uh, Sajin and get a quick approval from them and, and very great process integration systems. It's called a Telefy. They do a great job on that. A lot of good mm-hmm. people. I've known people there for years. Excellent people uh, on that in that division. And so the thing to understand about Nesto is they know absolutely sweet fuck all about commercial mortgages. Like they don't oh. know much about residential mortgages. They've sort of had to stumble through it and learn about mm-hmm. it. 
uh, by losing two hundred million dollars and you know all that stuff. But um, so they 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 through the Demarais they bought this thing, overpaid, and uh, they know nothing about the majority of the business. Mm. And you know, I think that eventually, you know, even though all the people are still there, all of my all the people I know are still there. They're going to, the announcement was they're going to continue to be there. I got a feeling some of those commercial people after a couple of years are going to say, well, why am I working for these guys who know sweet fuck all about it? Mm-hmm. Okay. Why don't I just start my own commercial lender again? Okay. Like. True. Yeah. You know, especially because, with all the expertise. You know, and, and the usual story is, but behind all this bullshit is that, um, you know, hey, uh, you know, Nesto, we're just, we're just technology technology geniuses we're digital geniuses okay Mm -hmm. so we can make everything smoother well commercial mortgages like brain power it's like human brain power contacts yeah like reputation okay Mm -hmm. which these guys at nesto have none of in the commercial world (laughs) yeah and so eventually i think some of those guys might stop and say to themselves well these guys that these tech guys seem to think they're really fucking good at mortgages but i think really i'm good at commercial mortgages so we shall see. I don't wait think and see. Yeah. Um, so that was some of the big news. Uh, and now we got the viewer mail. We got the yeah. mail from our, our peeps who are out there listening and mm-hmm. watching. What so, have they got to ask us today? This one says, my cousin looks like he's going to lose his house. Oh, he shit. lost his job. Mortgage payment went up last September. He took out a second mortgage and now he can't pay that off. He got a notice from his lawyer. What can he do? Oh, well, the, you know, if you got a notice, then you're under power of sale. Power of sale, um, the, you know, really what you should try to do is sell the house yourself. Mm-hmm. Don't wait till the bitter end. Like, try to sell the house yourself. Get it Because you can. Yeah. Even though you got that lawyer letter, you can sell it yourself. Mm-hmm. Try to get the best value you can. Because if there's some equity in the house, it should go to you. Mm-hmm. If you let the lender sell it, they're going to suck a whole bunch of it out. Okay? Yeah. Because, and, and justifiably so. Lawyers are expensive. Real estate costs are real. Uh, by the time and, and the lawyers, the, the lawyers t- takes time to do the full eviction, but that also costs money too. So just try to sell the house yourself. That's the best advice I can give. Uh, don't get scared. Don't run away. Don't you know? Just get a realtor. Mm-hmm. Sell the house at the best possible price you can get. And but because once the process starts, it's almost impossible to get out of. Okay, mm-hmm. if you've taken out a second mortgage, if you've got employment problems, if your variable rate mortgage went up, you can't afford anything. Just try to get out. And, mm-hmm. and do it on your own, though. Try to sell it on your own. Nice. This one says, why is the bank I have my mortgage with also part of my house insurance? If the house was in a fl- fire or flood, do I get paid or does the bank get paid? What happens? That's a good question. No, uh, And that's true of every single mortgage company in Canada and probably mm-hmm. in the world, that they are also very much linked to the insurance coverage for fire, flood, damage to the home, mm-hmm. general liability. They, they want to make sure that they've got involvement in that to make sure mm-hmm. it's, it's up to date at all times it makes perfect sense if you're lending big money you got to make sure you're covered for insurance so what typically happens if there's a total loss on the house is what we got to all realize that for houses particularly in cities the values in the land even more than the house mm-hmm. so if the house burns down the land's worth was always worth more than the house so just rebuild it mm-hmm. so yes your you know your mortgage company in rare cases they get paid out you get paid out but 90 percent of the time the house is rebuilt, okay? Mm-hmm. And that's an uncomfortable process because you got to live somewhere else. Yeah. Uh, but the house is rebuilt and that's how it's solved. But the reason the, the, the lender has to be involved is that they've got a lot of money at risk too. Right. So that's the, the correct answer to that, mm-hmm. okay? So, um, you know, what the... Uh, it's our favorite part of the program. <laughs> I just got to say, it's our favorite part. It is, Yeah. What the actual fuck? What the actual fuck is going on? Like, I keep coming back to the traffic problems, the endless fucking (laughs) demented construction, road construction, the endless fucking, but not just Toronto. Like, I'm hearing it in Montreal. So here's what I get, because I talk about this all the time in social media, how fucked up these cities are. Yeah. And I always talk about Toronto because I live here. But then sometimes the people in Montreal will come screaming at me in the comments section and say, no, fuck off. It's worse here. Okay, mm-hmm. it's much worse. The guy told me the story about, like, I had, I had friends come up to see the, they had the F1 in Montreal, right? Yeah. The F1 in Montreal. So my friends came up from New York 
and they watched a race, but then they ran right back to New York because they said, we cannot get around in your fucking town of Montreal in our oh cars because your fucking road systems are fucked. Yeah. And even the people, I know people who live there said, yeah, we went to the, we went down to the F1 and it took like an hour and a half just to get off that island. They hold the F1 on. I guess I'm fucking nuts. Okay. Holy shit. And I get comments about, when I talk about traffic in Toronto, I get comments lately because it's, it's, it's the summer. There's tourists, yeah. right? Tourists. Yeah. Yeah. This guy said, I drove in from Michigan. We were planning on spending a week doing sightseeing in Southern Ontario. I fucking left after two days. Your traffic's <laughs> fucked, okay? What's wrong with you it's people? So I can't bad. stand it here. Because actually in Michigan, you can get around pretty good. Their, their, their traffic system works very well mm -hmm. all across the state. I've been there. It's a good traffic system. Uh, we've got all these other people. Somebody say, yeah, I came up from Georgia. I couldn't stand it. I just fucking left. I mean, I, 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 I told the hotel to let the rooms go. It was so fucking nuts here. Yeah. So fuck me. This is so bad. The it's traffic's bad. so bad that when people come from other countries and see it and experience it, they say, you people are fucking crazy, right? Yeah, I actually did the mistake of driving downtown last week. Oh, my God. But you're in, you live in Toronto. I do. But you had to, you, so you, I, had to, you, you got caught in the traffic from Toronto to Toronto. Yeah. <laughs> and like coming home, because I went to a concert on a Tuesday night and coming home, I I should take the gardener and go west, right? The gardener, according to Google Maps, was longer. So I had to take all these side streets with the red lights because it was and it took and it still took me an hour. Oh, fuck. first of all, there was traffic. There was like there was heavy traffic on a Tuesday night. Let's summarize this. So this is it's so fucked up in Toronto. Mm -hmm. There's gridlock at 1 a.m. Yeah. There's gridlock on at Tuesday. 1 a.m. on a Tuesday night. On a Tuesday. Like, folks, let's just understand this clearly. <laughs> when there's fucking gridlock and you can't get, it takes you an hour plus to get from Toronto to Toronto at 1 a.m. on a Tuesday. And not even from one end to the other, from downtown to the west end. It's not, it should be a 20, 30 minute drive. Chop, Folks, chops. let us just come to the total truth of this. We're hey, fucked. Mayor Chow, all you people, Premier Ford, the fuckery is unmanageable Completely. with the traffic in this town, okay? Completely. Like, it's just gridlock, 1 a.m., Tuesday night. It's ridiculous. All Fuck. right, folks. <laughs> see you next week. If you like the pod, well, don't just sit there. Go to YouTube, Apple, Spotify, and all the other ones and like the pod. And don't forget to subscribe so we can keep being angry at mortgages and swearing about mortgages. Angry Mortgage could use your support.